Now that you've got your laptop, headphones, and speakers connected to your controller, it's time to launch Virtual DJ for the first time. Let's get to it. All right, now that we've got everything hooked up, it's time to run Virtual DJ LE for the first time. So head on over to your Applications folder if you're in a Mac, or Start Menu or Program Files directory if you're in a PC, and look for the Virtual DJ icon. Double click on that to launch it. So once you start the software, you're going to be shown the screen. Reserve your unique DJ name. You can go ahead and type your DJ name in here. You're going to type Digital DJ Tips here. Serve, type a password, and then I'll add my email. So go ahead and type your own email there, and it's going to send you a code that you can use in order to log in. So go check your email. I've got that in here, and then I'm going to type in my code. Continue, and then now you've got your virtual DJ account set up. Once that's done, you're going to find this window, new device detected. Basically, it just means that virtual DJ has detected that you've got the new Mark Party mix in there. So over here, this device has a sound card. Do you want to use it? Yes, new sound card. In addition, Virtual DJ has tailored interface for this controller. Do you want to use it? Yes. There we are. And then when you run Virtual DJ, you're going to find this update window. You can update to it, and it'll automatically update in the background. OK, so once you've clicked on Use Sound Card and Change Skin, the next one is to register your copy of Virtual DJ LE. So you have to click on Enter Key Code. And if you remember in your My Account dashboard over in the new Mark site, there was a serial code over there. So let's go back to our browser and go to your dashboard and look for the license code. Again, this is going to be different for everyone. So just copy the one that you have and then paste that over onto the key code field. Click OK. And you will have registered the software. And here we are. Cool. So now let's have a look at the interface. It may be a bit daunting if this is your first time using DJ software or if it's your first time to DJ. But don't worry. I'm going to clear things up for you in this lesson. Let's start at the top of the screen. This is the virtual decks area. And it's split into two, the left deck, or deck number one, and the right deck, or deck number two. In between these two decks is the mixer section of Virtual DJ. You'll find the EQ knobs here, the volume faders, and the cross fader. And above all these is the waveform display, which shows you the waveforms of the tunes that you're playing. They basically help you see your music. Now let's take a look at the opposite ends of the screen. Here you've got the performance pad section which basically shows you which performance pads you've got enabled or which pad mode you've got enabled. We're going to go into that a little bit later on. But over here, you can see that just like in the controller, you've got cues, loop, sample effect, as well as the four performance pads. Plus, you've also got your jog wheel graphic here, the transport, and the pitch fader, kind of like what you see on the controller, right? OK, so that's for the top half of the screen. Let's move to the bottom. This is the browser section of Virtual DJ LE. This is where you're going to find your music and playlists within Virtual DJ's library. The left window shows you your library folders and playlists, as well as your iTunes library. If you don't see iTunes here and you want to play tracks from your iTunes collection, don't worry. We'll set it up together in the next module, so sit tight. Now, this middle window shows you the contents of those folders and playlists. This is where you'll see your tracks, which you can then load over onto the virtual decks. So for example, if I click on this folder over here, I've got tracks that I have stored in my DJ Songs folder on my hard drive. And then I can just click and drag these over onto the decks, or I can use uh, the buttons on the party mix in order to do that. And I'm going to show you how to load tracks later on. Now, Virtual DJ also has a sampler, as I mentioned at the beginning of this course. And you'll find the sampler window over here if you click on this button, 
with these six square boxes. This is the sampler. And right now, you can just click on them if you want to trigger these sounds. Of course, you don't have to. And you can actually use the pads on the new Mark Party Mix in order to trigger these sounds. I'm going to show you how to do just that later on as well. Now, there are four other windows that you can switch to over here. If you left click on side list, this is basically another playlist that you can view alongside uh, the middle window that you've got over here. So you can load tracks here in case you're preparing. Maybe you are at a gig and you've got like a bunch of requests coming in. You can use side list for that. It's good for that. And then you also have the auto mix playlist because, well, you can let Virtual DJ mix tracks for you on the fly without having to do anything. You can just load the tracks here and it'll automatically do that for you. And then you also have karaoke. If you DJ karaoke parties, you can drop your karaoke files over there. And this one basically just clones whatever you've got over here in the middle window, whichever folder or playlist you've got highlighted. So you can go ahead and choose from among all of your other folders over there without leaving uh, the first one that you selected earlier. Now, finally, over here on the right side, you've got the information window, which gives you a little bit more detail about the tracks that you already have selected. So you can view all sorts of metadata over there. And yeah, that's it. Just gives you a nice deep look at the tracks that you've got. Now, over here at the very top of the screen, you're gonna find the blue, red, and green dots. These are the new Mark's Party Mix lights, and basically it's a status display. Right now, we've got the lights on, as you can see on the controller and in the interface. And if we want to turn it off or if you wanna change the program, all we gotta do is to press the button at the rear of the Party Mix unit. And when you click that, now we've got it turned off. And it also says that it's off over in the software. Turn it on again. Now you've got the ability to go through the programs. Now I'm going to show you these lighting programs later when we've got a track loaded over onto the desk so you can see how the lights interact in time with the music. Cool, so before we end this video, let's have a look at some settings in Virtual DJ LE and make sure that we've got it optimized for use. Open the settings window by clicking on the gear icon over here. And let's just double check our settings. Output should be speaker and headphone, correct. Card should be new mark party mix, that's right. Nothing should be highlighted for input. And the outputs over here should be master, party mix, channel one and two, and headphones, party mix, channels three and four. So everything looks A-OK. -okay. Let's just close this window. You've now got Virtual DJ running on your laptop, and I want you to spend a bit of time getting familiar with the layout and look of Virtual DJ. In the next lesson, I'll show you how the Party Mix controller mirrors the Virtual DJ interface. I'll see you then.